The historical buildings of Angkor are a sublime mixture of the surreal, intricate geometric design and exquisite building techniques. They are a fusion of brilliance and mystery, and they feature exaggerated forms side by side with forms from real life. In the year AD 1112, King Suryavarman II ascended the throne of Cambodia. One historical record states, he was as virtuous as the sun, he could make lotus flowers bloom and cause everything to flourish. It is certainly true that during his reign, Cambodia became the strongest country in Southeast Asia, and in terms of its architecture, Angkor saw its most glorious days. And it was during this illustrious period that Angkor Wat was built. Angkor Wat is the most famous among the building groups of Angkor, and it was built in the period now known as Angkor Stage 2. Angkor Wat is also called the Vishnu Shrine, the reason being that King Suryavarman II worshipped Vishnu, the guardian of Hinduism, and he built Angkor Wat in honour of the Hindu god. Vishnu is the Hindu deity in charge of universal order. Legend has it that the god Vishnu slept on the body of the serpent Seshnaga, or Ananta, as he drifted on the sea of the universe, and that every time he slept, more than 4.32 billion years would pass in the world of mortals. Every time he woke, a lotus flower would begin to grow out of his navel, and the lotus flower would give birth to Brahma, who would begin to create a new world. However, after the new world had evolved for another 4.32 billion years, Siva, the god of destruction and regeneration, would destroy it. According to this pattern, the god Vishnu would sleep and then awake, over and over again, causing the universe to be born and destroyed in a constant cycle. Angkor Wat was built out of huge blocks of stone on an area that is flat. Together, the temple's 1,532 stone pillars weigh an incredible 3 billion tons. Yet while all the stone structures fit together perfectly, no adhesive agent of any kind was used. Most of the stone blocks weigh around 500 kilograms, but the largest weigh up to 10 tons. The tolerance in the walls on the southern and northern sides comes to less than one per thousand. Everyone who comes to Angkor Wat wants to climb to the top, but it is an arduous task. It is often said that Angkor Wat is a giant symbol. Angkor Wat was built in the shape of Sumeru Mountain. According to Hinduism, Sumeru Mountain, located in the Great Sea, is the center of the universe, the place where all the deities dwell, and on its four sides are four smaller mountains. It is believed that the sun and the moon revolve around Sumeru Mountain. In accordance with this vision of the universe, the builders of Angkor Wat came up with a particularly geometric design. Angkor Wat is, in fact, the world's largest religious building, and it took around 89 years to build. Around 15 million people worked on its construction, and by the time it was completed, King Suryavarman II had been dead many years. Angkor Wat has three floors, representing hell, the human world, and paradise. On the ground floor, a long corridor runs around an altar in the middle of a hall, and the walls of the corridor feature exquisite murals. The second tier of the altar is 10 meters higher than the first tier. The altar's highest tier is no less than 65 meters above the ground. On its top are five stone stupas, the highest being the one in the middle. This is the very center of paradise.
The concept of hell, the human world, and paradise is not only depicted in the form of the buildings, but also in the carvings on the wall. The carvings on the corridor wall in the east tell the story of the churning of the ocean of milk. Legend has it that buried under Sumeru Mountain in the churning ocean of milk was the elixir of life protected by a giant snake. In a battle to obtain this elixir, the deities and the devil grabbed the tail and head of the snake, and the struggling snake stirred the seawater into a churning mass of waves. As a result, all life in the sea died and Sumeru Mountain was about to fall. At this, Vishnu transformed himself into a giant turtle and propped up the mountain. A thousand years later, treasures rose from the bottom of the sea, among them the greatly sought-after elixir of life. At the same time, Lakshmi, who was to be Vishnu's wife, was born from a seawater foam. The carvings on the walls of the corridor depict legends and fairy tales from India. The carvings on the northern wall tell stories about the battle fought by the god Vishnu against the heavenly devil. Those on the northern part of the western wall depict stories from the Indian epic Ramayana. Those on the southern part of the western wall depict the story Haha Bharata. The carvings on the southern wall depict a battle waged by Cambodians against invaders. The Mekong River Delta has been a strategic area since ancient times. The land here is as rich as gold and it enjoys the benefits provided by its many rivers, lakes and access to the sea. Anyone who could own this land could have great wealth and power. He is going to fight enemy. They, they, they uh, correct the soldier under the forest. The carvings further down reveal Cambodian stone carving skills of even greater sophistication. Each of the wall paintings is 778.28 meters long, and reviewing all of them takes two or three hours. The stones of Angkor tell of a great period of a brilliant civilization. Here, historical scenes have been immortalized in stone. Bayon Temple is enclosed by a long wall covered in relief carvings. The carvings reveal details of local life, such as trading at a country market, hunting, barbecuing game, treating illnesses, delivering a child, performing music, wrestling, dancing, acrobatics, war, and house building. In all, there are some 11,000 human figures featured in these carvings, and in conjunction with the description in Zhou Daguan's book, we can gain a clear image of Angkor in ancient times. According to the observations of Zhou Daguan, at that time the Cambodian king, his court ministers and his subjects lived in wooden houses with tiled roofs or in crude thatched huts. And while the king wore gold and silver ornaments, he walked about barefoot. Common people, meanwhile, did not have tables, stools or buckets in their houses. Instead, they cooked in pottery pots, used coconut shells as ladles, ate with their fingers and slept on straw mats on the bare floor. But these same people built the magnificent city of Angkor on a grand scale. Archaeological finds revealed no traces of human settlements anywhere near Angkor Wat, and finds of everyday utensils were rare. A number of Western experts doubted that Angkor Wat was even built by the Cambodians. But in the end, they were proved wrong. As time has passed, more and more archaeological finds have shown that the temple was indeed built by the ancient Cambodians. When the French established the Far East Research Institute, 
has sent a researcher to the Institute's Cambodia branch to conduct research at the Angkor site for several years. After comparing the facial features on the stone statues at Angkor with those of modern Cambodians, he came to the conclusion that they looked very similar. Bantie Sre is commonly referred to as the Queen's Palace, but in reality, it was not a palace for a queen. It was built by King Jaya Viravaman V in AD 967, but it features numerous carvings of goddesses. This grand temple, located 25 kilometers from the city of Angkor, was built to honor the Hindu deity, Siva. The temple is part of what is now termed Angkor Stage 2, and as such, it bears the obvious influence of Hindu architectural styles. Construction of Greater Angkor began in the year 889 at the behest of the Cambodian king Yasovarman I, and his successors carried on his work for the next.